Hi, um, welcome to this um, video session of the, um, the advanced digital editing program um, that we run here at the um, Digital Humanities Unit in the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Um, in this session, um, my colleague uh, Christopher Oak, who um, lectures in the Institute of English Studies and also in the Digital Humanities Research Hub, is going to give you an introduction to XPath, um, basically um, explaining what XPath is and what we use it for, and there'll be more, um, there'll be more technical um, videos later in the series um, explaining how you use it and, and some of the syntax and so forth. But, but, but for today, um, what, what is XPath? Christopher. <laughs> Thanks very much. Right. So. Um, what I'm going to introduce to you now is the first part of a three-part uh, series of videos that will cover what is XPath and what is it good for. That's what this video is about. But then the next one will be the concepts and basic syntax of XPath. And then finally, we'll end with some basic functions and calculations and address how we can navigate through the axes of XPath um, while we're traversing XML trees. Um, so more on that later, but let's get back to point number one for this video, which is what is XPath and what is it good for? In order to do that, we need to return to some fundamentals of XML. And this is just a reminder. If you're an XML aficionado, you may want to just skip this part of the video, but it's good to remind yourself nevertheless that XML is a formal model that consists of a vocabulary and a grammar. That is, XML documents need to be valid, consisting of, of a consistent vocabulary and structural grammar that makes sure that it's well-formed and somewhat logically constructed. So, the reason why we do that um, is that we're naming phenomena in whatever text we're working on and creating a set of rules by which all of these bits logically fit together. And this is rendered in what's called an ordered hierarchical content object. And the reason for doing that is that we tend to formalize and represent um, information using hierarchies and logical structures. So XML is really just meant to represent a kind of formalization process that we naturally do when we're dealing with complex information. And computers are particularly good at parsing and processing hierarchical trees far more than they are um, at working with non-hierarchical text. So what we're thinking about here is a very efficient way of organizing information and parsing it. And XPath is the means by which we can identify particular information in an unambiguous way using the XPath language. So um, a final point is if we can model these documents as trees, we can then manage and manipulate large amounts of data in the most economical way. So XML is the basis of the work that we're doing in digital scholarly editing, and XPath is the means by which we can change and analyze that XML. So a little bit of background on XPath, and I won't go into too much detail here because you can check out some of this information on your own, but it's really important to stress that XPath is, used, uh, is written in a non-XML syntax. So the language itself is basically written in natural language. Um, and the point of this non-XML syntax is to identify parts of an XML document for analysis or manipulation. Uh, XPath gets its name uh, because of its use of path notation. And we'll see what that means in a moment. But basically, when you use XPath, you return a path, which looks something like a URL um, or a document structure. Um, now, XPath is a fairly recent um, language and a recent technology. Uh, it was released in 1999. And as of now, most people are still only working with XPath 2.0. So second version of XPath, which was released in 2007. Um, and uh, another thing that I'll point out is XQuery, which also uses XPath for uh, processing 
um, or querying that is databases of XML data. We'll talk about that more later, but it's worth mentioning that XPath works, works in concert with not only XML, as I've said, but also XSLT, which we'll get into later in this workshop, but also XQuery, which is another XML-based querying language that's worth knowing about. Now, back to the original question, what is XPath exactly? Well, for us, it's two things. One, it's a language for querying XML documents. The second thing is that it's a language for selecting parts of an XML document for further processing, usually with XSLT, but also with XQuery, which I just mentioned. Let's return to the first point for querying XML documents. Here's an example of a standard XPath query. So um, at the top, you can see the query uh, is pointing to XPath 2.0. That's in the Oxygen XML editor. And what I'm querying is a count function, uh, how many ad tags are there in this XML document. And at the bottom, you can see the result, 3,512. And all this is doing is um, asking uh, through Oxygen um, and an XPath query in Oxygen how many ad tags there are. It returns a result. And that's one of the reasons why we like working in the software Oxygen, because Oxygen has a lot of these tools built in, like XPath and XSLT. So you can do some simple querying, like counting certain elements. You can also select parts for further processing, as I said. Now, this is an example of an XPath expression that is written, uh, that is used specifically for further processing in XSLT. So what you're seeing here is an XSLT style sheet. And circled in red here is an XPath uh, expression, which is saying, um, find me all divs that have the attribute value work with the attribute value uh, com. And essentially what you're looking at here is an XSLT transformation that is finding uh, certain elements within it or certain information within a div and processing it and rewriting it into a new XML format. It's a bit complicated, but this just shows you how powerful XPath can be um, in XSLT for transforming content. And this is kind of the backbone of what we'll do with XSLT. But you can't write XSLT without knowing some XPath. So that's one reason why it's good. Um, so it makes XML encoding and processing easier, more accurate, and more consistent. I mentioned earlier that it's unambiguous. So an XPath expression unambiguously takes you to exactly the node set or the information that you need in an XML document. And because XML is machine readable and descriptive, you can perform really precise searches. Now, this is a really important point that I want you to think about, and that is XML or XPath does not change the XML that you're querying, and it doesn't process it. It just returns the results of a search that might contain uh, a path location. It might contain a number. It might contain a Boolean value, true or false. It might also just contain the contents of a node. So it might look like you're changing the XML, but you're not. You're using XPath to simply return the results of a particular search. So XPath is not only good for checking and querying an individual document, it is also essential for writing any processing instructions, whether it's an XSLT or XQuery. And as I said before, the results you get are like a path in an address or a URL or a document structure that are showing you uh, the actual uh, pathway through the XML tree structure. Now, it's worth pondering, having said all this, why we are doing this somewhat complicated uh, form of computational work in an editing class. There are two main reasons for this. One is that all digital editions need to be parsed and rendered into various presentation formats. So this is especially true when we're working with semantically encoded documents in TEI. So XPath is an essential 
piece of the publishing pipeline for any XML based edition. Because as I said, you have to use XPath in order to write XSLT. And in order to publish an XML based edition, you have to use something like XSLT or a programming language, which invokes X XPath to, to publish your material. So it's really XPath is essential piece in your advanced digital editing toolkit because it's part of the conception of the edition itself. What parts of your encoding need to be processed and for what purposes are they being published? XPath helps you identify and essentially index those pieces of information. But the second piece here is also really interesting and is somewhat overlooked, I think, which is XPath also facilitates the analysis of editorial content. Uh, so I showed you in a previous slide um, how you could use an XPath expression to count all ad tags in an XML document. So the ad tags might contain a bunch of genetic information in, uh, in a manuscript. Um, now, for analysis purposes, that might be really important for me to understand how many ad tags there are as opposed to, say, deletion del tags. So in this way, you're using XPath in a way to kind of facilitate various kinds of analysis. And it can be a crucial aspect of what you would call editing as analysis, or thinking of the editing and the computation to analyze features of the edition that form the basis of critical interpretations. So that's the end of uh, this first section of what is XPath. But Gabby, um, do you have any questions or observations based on what I've just said? Well, I think that was really useful, thank you. Um, the, the only thing I'd add is maybe just to restate your final point, maybe in, a, in an even more fundamental um, and, and less nuanced way, which is that um, XPath is um, the thing that allows us to do, to, to, to make use of every single thing we put in an XML encoded digital edition. Anything that you want to encode in XML, you're doing it so that you can get it back out and you can only get it back out with XPath. So I'm tagging personal names in there because I want to be able to, whatever, count them, yeah. compare them, um, concord them, whatever you're doing, any of those things that you're going to do, XPath is, is what will do them. So whatever you're doing, everything that you're deciding to mark out, it's, it's only XPath that allows you to make use of that mark. Yeah, that's right. and. The analytical aspect of XPath really lends itself to some interesting new ways of dealing with digital editions. So you might have a bunch of TEI data that might not even exist in a publication format per se, but you can download that TEI and use a bunch of XPath expressions to extract a bunch of interesting information that's agnostic as to any particular publishing format, it's more of an analytical tool. So, um, but you're right too, that like the business of extracting any particular encoded information is really like the crucial element here. Yeah, whether it's for querying or, you know, for numerical reasons or, or whatever, or whether it's just to say, you know, I want, I want to see um, all, you know, I just want to see a couple of examples of text that's in direct quotes. Um, yeah. If you know what the XML looks like, you can write XPath to find them. Um, and that's, yeah, that's why we've marked it up, is so that people can find them, right? And that's, and that's what XPath does. Yeah, and, and another thing that's interesting, too, is that with, with digital editing, um, there are a lot more levels of, of typesetting involved, in a way. Um, so with print editing, if you were doing a scholarly edition in print, you would essentially be preparing printer's copy, which is then typeset by a professional publisher and made into a book. Whereas XPath is sort of one of the tools that you'll use for typesetting whatever your XML is into another format, whether that's a book or a website or a table of statistics or whatever. So it's basically a new, it's, it's a, it's a, purely computational um, kind of tool for, for typesetting and generating new new information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great, thank you very much. I think that was a really useful overview and onto, onto more technical um, questions in later videos. Thank you. <laughs>